Hey, what up, Trekkie friends? Uh, again, with this episode, I forgot to mention that there are spoilers in this episode for the Lower Decks Season 4, Episode 3 in the Cradle of Vexilon. So, if you haven't watched that episode yet and you don't want any spoilers, then go to Red Alert. Stop this video now. Go and watch it, and then come back and check the video out. So from here on in, it's spoiler-filled all the way. Enjoy the episode. Welcome back, Trekkie friends, to another Good, Bad and Batshit Hailing Frequencies podcast video. That's way too long a title. We need to find something <laughs> shorter. Um, I am one of your hosts, Stu. And I'm your other host, Alistair. Alistair, what do you think? It's far too long a title, isn't it? It's pretty long. We should probably uh, yeah, find, find something snappier soon. Yeah, when I run out of characters putting it into YouTube, which I think you're allowed 100 characters, I think, you know, the title's a bit long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing if well, not let's... descriptive. Oh, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> gotta gotta hit those algorithms. Um so speaking of which listeners, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit like and hit the notification bell icon. Love you forever for it. Thank you very much. Uh want to get us up to 500 subscribers. We're so so close at the moment. Uh, but yeah, we want to sort of get that milestone achieved there'll be another milestone after that of course but you know that's the one we're focusing on so yeah do that um right should we throw ourselves straight into some lower decks season four cradle of vexalon we're talking about today Stu. how did yes. you find cradle of vexalon how did i find it i i searched on amazon prime for lower deck season four no that's a that's a <laughs> joke. um i love lower decks um i have a huge amount of confirmation bias when it comes to lower decks they can do no wrong in my book that said i do have things for the bad list how about yourself <laughs> <laughs> yeah i really enjoyed it and i think same as you and, and i think that the you know the, sh the show's earned it basically you know I, I think that even um even episodes that are maybe not as strong as, as others tend to a little bit like we were talking about in in weeks gone by with strange new worlds uh, even episodes that are not as um strong as others tend not to be outright bad they're just not you know the best of a good bunch um and uh, you know, there's the then that's very very commendable for any show. So um yeah, but like yourself, I do I do have stuff for the bad list, but this was another another fun week spent with the uh, the Lower Decks crew, definitely. Well, before we get on to uh our bad lists, should we start with some good? Well, it's nice to start with some good. Um what did you find good about this one, Stu? So I've got um as I'm tending to do these days, I've got a couple of honourable mentions and I've got main good. So my, my honourable mentions, this this should have gone on the first episode of season four, to be honest, but I've been meaning to mention it, but I keep forgetting. The whale probe in the credits. Yes. Loving that. Loving that. Um, and I've, I've, I'm, I've got a theory. Do you want to hear my theory? Or should I save it? For, no, I'll save it for the batshit because it might be a batshit theory. I'll, yeah. Remind okay. me. Remind me because I've not made a note of this. Okay. Um, <laughs> the other honourable mention I've got for the good side is Mariner singing not Alan Meringue, but Lemon Meringue. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I love that too. Um, I love the callback to to Chula in general. Um, it, it is on my 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 good list for this, so I'm right there with you, Stu. I thought that was uh, that was a great Mariner moment. That's it. But my my main one is more of a serious uh, point. It, it was 
Um, oh, and we should say, <laughs> spoiler alert, by the way, everyone. <laughs> I'll stick a thing right at the beginning. Um, it'll be fine. Um, yeah, Boimler's death as as part of his character growth, his character evolution. Um, I think I think that's going to be something we're going to have callbacks on, and I think it's going to be pivotal for him as a character. I I thought it was a good good move, and it got me. Yeah, it got me when he flew out the explosion and landed there. Don't mind admitting, I got a bit choked up. And I think you're, you're, you know, I totally see where you're coming from. You know, it it, it feels deserving of being a pivotal moment for his character. Um, I think particularly because of the his story for the rest of the episode of his his adjustment to his new command position and um, kind of losing, trying to shake his old uh, mindset of of his his issues with with being in. In command and and how that means that he relates to to people beneath him in the chain and um it it, it I yeah totally agree it deserves that kind of uh you know it deserves to be a bit of a callback but a pivotal moment for the character a little bit uncertain that they'll use it in that way but in, in agreement that it would be a bit of a shame if it's just sort of like well that was this week's story and we'll we'll move on so hopefully we get you know it gets to be something a bit more than that they've been pretty smart about that sort of thing so far so yeah yeah fingers like, fingers crossed high, yeah. expect, high expectations how about yourself <laughs> uh to Lynn, i just love to Lynn's character and uh, it was a real treat after i was complaining with the the previous strange new worlds episode that she wasn't there to get a lot of to Lynn in this episode and just the perfect um foil for boimler in this episode um wonderful deadpan delivery and um, articulating his his every fear and some some nice moments um sort of um <laughs> the um, the bit I'm thinking of is where um, she is uh, trying to encourage him, and she gives him the brilliant sort of pep talk of you know you have to let go of the your your way of thinking about this and command these uh, crewmen to help or we're all going to die kind of thing. And he, he says, um, and she says she's read his reports, and this is why she's saying this. And and, and Boimler makes that makes mention of oh the reports were that good, and she. She, I can't remember the exact line, but she gives a brilliant sort of like. Um, uh, they also mentioned the uh, the yeah. your, your your faults quite nicely as well, kind of quip or something, and um, just just yeah, great. They contain uh, the positives I, and negatives. Hmm. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I love a, a good bit of um, uh, deadpan delivery and, and sarcasm and. Um, yeah, so to, to learn in this episode, a uh, big thumbs up from me. Um, still hoping that we get her to a point where she is in every episode um, feature to, to some extent. Um, what else is on my list? Um, <laughs> the Betazoid gift box, talking of good throwbacks. Uh, I have Chula and the Betazoid gift box noted down. Um <laughs> Uh, I mean, what's what's not to like, really? The 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 Betazoid gift box giving a, a sort of a running commentary as uh, Rutherford's uh, trying to make his way through the Chula maze was, uh, was really good fun and uh, just a great, you know, a, a, the, it's a it's the perfect next generation kind of zany throwback item for lower decks. I feel so. I, I did enjoy seeing that that again this week. They missed uh, an opportunity with the voice actor for the the gift box. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if the gift box it, they even named the voice actor for it. Um, but of course, you know who the original gift box was, don't you? No, who is it against you? It's been a while. It's been a while. Armin Shimmerman. He's he's everywhere. Quark. Yeah, yeah, he was also one of the first Ferengi in the Ferengi, last yeah. No, I know I knew that one, but I was not, I did not remember the, the gift box, so that would have been really fun, wouldn't it? And they've already had him appear on the show as well, so you like to think they that have. maybe wouldn't have been the hardest cameo to, to arrange, but 
I guess it, it wasn't to be. I was still very amused by the the gift box oh, this time. But yeah, that 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 would have that would have been the icing icing on the cake for sure to have him do the uh the work for him. That would have been good. Would have been good. Um, yeah. What about what they could have done better though? What about the bad? Mm. So, um, I felt that it. Uh, a little bit like the Voyager episode, it felt just a little bit crowded for me again. Um, I know that Lower Decks is is um, always going to be pretty fast paced, and that they you know they get a lot out of um, very busy humor and and bringing in a lot of ideas and mixing them in kind of interesting, funny ways. But I just felt that, um, for example, the the escaped raccoon running joke in in this um and mm-hmm. the kind of folk yeah yeah i mean great name but um <laughs> the, the that and the the amount of time turned over to the ai gone wrong on the planet's surface um they it just you know, I, I quite happily could have seen more than just one of the characters in the Chula maze for quite a bit of time. And I think being very amused by how that scenario would have played out. Um, so, again, maybe it's just a, a preference thing for me where I have, you know, I have little pet favorite things in this episode that I would have liked a little bit more time spent on. But I did feel that it just felt like a, li- a little bit hectic, a little bit like I could have spent more time with with some aspects of it rather than having more added on top. Um, and the one other thing that I noted down is pretty much just what we said at the start, actually, which is the um i would be i know there's favorite episodes for different people but i would be pretty surprised if this was a lot of people's favorite laura dex episodes this was kind of like i think a perfectly good episode but not sort of um one that that is uh sort of going to be an all-time all-time star trek great so that was everything on my a very short list Sue. what about yourself what was on your bad list I've I've only got a couple of items myself. Um, again, I I focus on the computer thing. Um, AI gone wrong. Oh, and uh, by the way, we've been talking about AI gone wrong in in, in a couple of recent videos. Agimus is who Jeffrey Coombs played. Uh-huh. I couldn't remember the name. Of the computer. So this is uh, the, yeah <laughs> stored stored with peanut hamper at the Daystrom Institute that currently. That's is. the one. That's the one. Um, and I thought again, sort of like you know, you're watching the episode and you think you kind of you predict where you think it's going to go. And I thought they were going to introduce someone like Agamus or Peanut Hamper to put Vexilon right or to take over from Vexilon or something like that. I was I was a little bit disappointed and I had to watch it twice and the second time really carefully to make sure I understood the solution properly was to switch it off and on again. Now I've sort of I've no problem with that as a solution, except it's a lazy solution when it comes to how to fix a computer. I mean, even like well, we just mentioned the last outpost. The Enterprise computer goes right. Was that the last outpost? Yeah, that was the last out. No, the one with the virus. Um, the one with the virus where the sister ship, the Odyssey, blows up. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. I know the episode you mean, Stu. <laughs> I, I'm sure all our viewers know the episode <laughs> I mean. Um, <laughs> if not, go and watch Next Generation. It's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that that their solution was to switch it off and on. It's because there was Ferengis in both episodes, Ferengi ships. Um, yeah, I, I think that's fine. But if you're going to do that, make a big joke of it. Kind of, if Ransom had just like if it had said, "How did you fix it?" and, and Carol had like spilled off the techno babble, and maybe if Ransom had just gone, "You mean you switched it off and on again?" That would have been satisfying yep but, yeah, I, I see what you mean I, yeah yeah they literally switched it off and on again but didn't reference it um 
So, yeah, uh, not quite sure what that was about. Um, my other, again, this is like, so as, I, as I said in our last video, it's like th these irritants more than anything else. Carol Freeman, the captain, she's supposed to be working on her delegation skills. That seems to have gone out the window for this episode. Yes. <laughs> and should the captain even be going on an away mission in the first place? I'm sure Riker had things to say about that. Why isn't Ransom kind of... Because we know he wants the big job. We know he wants to exert his authority. He should be saying, no, captain, I'm not allowing you to go down on this away mission. Or maybe he's... Maybe Very he's true. Ahead of a, I don't know. <laughs> I, I yeah that, that, that could be right <laughs> um yeah no i think you know um all that being said um a big thumbs up from me for this episode now one thing i'm really intrigued by is um whether yeah what was your favorite line in this episode Stu? did you note one down lemon meringue great choice i thought we might have the same favorite line again because mine was, I miss my wife, which was my favorite line from the first <laughs> episode of the season as well. <laughs> and I actually have this listed for my for my batshit for this episode was that I love the moment where the inner light ray hits um, the Betazoid. Uh, gift box and it it's sort of whoa did I just live a whole nother life and you know then it looks really crestfallen and says I miss my wife and uh, I found it funny but I found it even funnier just because it was very strange to have the same line be as hilarious you know uh, one week later as it was in in the the first week's episode so um, that's an excellent spot an excellent spot um yeah, a poor bugger doesn't even get a Resican flute out of it because Picard's got that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, and no, no hands to uh, to to uh, to go to it, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Did he? Do you think he, he the gift box had a body, or was he on a planet of other gift boxes, or? <laughs> there's, there's oh, a I feel we need um... an entire episode on this now. <laughs> I was just supposed to say there's a, a great supplementary tie-in novel for someone to write, you know, lower decks, the, <laughs> yeah, the gift, gift box, the inner light, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. What, what about your... batshit what... moments? What you got? This, so yeah, that 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 was my my batshit moment for for this one. Um, I mean, the the moment itself is batshit enough, but just the fact that it's the exact same line from from last week, and it's just as funny, even though it's um. A, a totally different um, sort of context. Uh, I just was like, "What's going on here? Like, is, is one of the writers going through something?" And it's it's coming out. He's I miss my wife. <laughs> episode, episode quote. Yeah. I, I wonder if they're going to do going to try and insert that into kind of most episodes or as many episodes. They, rather like um, I don't know if you've you've watched BoJack Horseman. I haven't. But is, is oh, this like the, I, you know, I running, love Bojack. Long running line. It's there's there's a line that is just it's in almost every single episode, and it's an innocuous line. Um, it it's not a spoiler to to tell you what it is. It's what are you doing here? But it's it's so it's used so often, and naturally that it it's yeah. It, it, but it's also like kind of. On a metaphysical level, what are you doing here? Like it's it's Bojack Horseman is like incredibly witty and clever, and I've got all the love in the world, and I must have watched it a dozen times over. Um, Amazing. anyway, I, I, I must I must <laughs> I must check it out sometime. Um, I mean, I I feel like the I miss my wife thing is just is just random coincidence. But I did just a massive double take and wonder whether there was something more going on when I did did notice it. So, yeah, that was that was my batshit moment for the week. What about yours, Stu? Well, we do. Do you know what? I'm going to put a tally up on the on the screen for how many times I miss my wife has been said, and if it's said <laughs> again, we'll bring the tally back up and we'll increase it. And yeah, we'll see what happens. Um. 
so I got two. One of them was the Betazoid gift box. Um, I, I just thought that whole thing was just utterly batshit. Um, but the biggest one for me was the Black Mountain and the Koala. Yes. <laughs> it's the Black Mountain that Shax had referred to. Well, of course, you know about the Black Mountain, he said to Rutherford. And we've seen the Black Mountain now. And and when I when I did my second watch of it, I actually turned the subtitles on to see what the koala said. And it oh. just said a koala language. So, so I don't know whether I'm impressed there. or disappointed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you have any speculations to that? So that's what I want to know. What do you think is going on there? I think he was telling him the reason. Gosh, that sounds very deep, doesn't it? (laughs) (laughs) The reason. The reason. Yeah, great choice for the answer is (laughs) forty-two. Great choice. I wouldn't put that past lower decks. (laughs) No, yeah, definitely not. (laughs) And good choice for a budget moment. I should. I should have. uh, I should have. I maybe consider that for my own uh, choice, actually. Um, yeah, you know what? I'll have to I'll have to put the thinking cap and on and get back to you on that. I, it, it was so bad shit that it threw me for a loop where it when it popped up. So uh, yeah, I'll have to have to I'll have to do a rewatch like you did and and uh, see what I can get get out of it. It uh, it it stands rewatching, definitely. Definitely. So we're getting a big old thumbs up for the in the cradle of Vexilon. Big thumbs up. Definitely a big thumbs Fantastic. up for this one. Fantastic. And uh, obviously looking forward to the next episode of Lower Decks. I don't think there's any question about that. Um, are we disappointed that we didn't see anything of this mysterious ship? Do you know what? I was happy to have a week off, I think. Um, I think if you're not going to progress that story at all, and I'm not sure that I would want it to move on too much if it's an overarching thing, sort of piecemeal through these episodes. If you're just going to sort of have it show up, um, do a, a skit with the lower decks on a, a alien species ship and then have this thing obliterate the ship. I think that doing that for the first two episodes, I wasn't sad to have a break in the in the third one. If we were just going to get sort of, I mean, I've really enjoyed this because the, the Romulan one particularly, I was, I was uh, doubled over laughing at. So, um, but I, yeah, not sad to have a week off this week. Um, what about you, Stu? Did you feel the, feel the absence of that? No, I'm. It's playing on my mind. Um, it it occupies my every waking hour. I mean, that's an exaggeration, but um, I do spend a lot of time thinking about what. But for some reason, that the the ship itself looks really familiar. Now you, yeah, think, you were saying this. Yeah. I think I've worked out where from. It's taken me ages. The design of the ship, for some reason. Puts me in mind of the boxes that the orbs of the prophets are in. Yes, really good, really good catch, Stu, because I don't think I would have got that if you'd left me to think about it for ages, but you're absolutely quite correct that the sort of oval on the front of the spaceship does yeah. look like the oval on the front of the box and even the kind of contouring of the sides around it don't look dissimilar um yeah i mean i bet if you saw a picture side by side you'd they they look nothing like but you know but it's more of a vibe more of a feeling yep yeah Um, and uh, you know we were saying that you know whatever uh, whatever destroys these ships has to be pretty powerful and certainly an orb is one of the sort of few um, bits of of track cannon that we we might look at and think, well, you know, p- potentially. So I, I don't think it's too much of a a stretch to to have that idea. There is that, but I had my uh, my batshit theory about. Oh yes, the okay. mysterious. I, it's time. So yeah, I think I think we're being dropped a hint by seeing the whale probe 
in the credits. The Whale Probe and Vija have one thing or, or one fundamental thing in common in that they send out a communication. If the recipient doesn't understand the communication, they destroy it. And I think this is the direction that this ship is going down. I think it's it's communicating with the occupants of the ships in a way that they don't they aren't aware of it. And when they don't get a response, boom. I've also read a theory online. And I mean I read a lot of theories online, Reddit's full of them. Um but it did kind of resonate with me a little bit that this theory that before the ship is destroyed, maybe it's transporting the crew off. Um, yeah, and there are would, yeah. two reasons for that theory. Uh, one is you don't see any bodies in amongst the wreckage. Very true. But the other was we saw the um, the Klingon ship get destroyed, and it's the, um, the the same Klingon ship from the Lower Decks episode um, where we first saw the the Klingon ship. Um, and and people they're they're like fan favorites those characters, and people got really excited to see them again. So killing them off seems like a bit of a missed step, perhaps. I can definitely see, I can see the merit in this this line of thinking. Um, my money was still on this ship being a. Oh, you just told me the name of the supercomputer. Uh, the, the Agamus. Place. Agamus. My money was still on Agamus and Peanut Hamper somehow being involved with this ship because the longer that we don't see uh, a, a follow-on from their meeting at Daystrom, the more convinced I am that it's coming further further down the, the line in this season somewhere. So, um, however, I don't think they would be the, the types to be... Um, benevolently removing the crew before destroying anything no. so um so perhaps perhaps i'm off the mark because i do like that idea that um i like the idea that that the lower decks crew are going to be involved in in rescuing or recovering or maybe even meeting uh these crews wherever they've been moved to and working with them um there's a lot there, there's a lot of potential there so I mean, yeah, I wouldn't be sad if that was the the case. Well, if I'm right, and I'm thinking like, if I was a writer and I was going down that route, there's one thing I would absolutely do in the last episode of the series: I'd destroy the Cerritos, mm. and I'd do it really early on in the episode, so you didn't know if the crew were alive or dead. Yeah, or what about we? Because we suspect that the last two episodes of the season might might be a two parter, possibly. Theoretically, yeah, yeah. Do yeah. is a cliff is the cliffhanger between the two of them? Maybe that that'd be a good spot for it. Definitely. Yeah, there's there's a, there's a lot of potential there. If yeah, if the if it you know, if it follows the pattern, uh, and you you do get the Cerritos blowing up. Uh, that's good. that's going to be a heck of a moment later in the uh, the season. So I look forward to seeing seeing that happen. Mm. But does this, that might mean, does this mean we get the Cerritos the Cerritos A next season? <laughs> the Cerritos, yeah, the the sovereign class version of the California class. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cerritos A. Yeah, that'd be uh, that'd be fun to see. Lots of good jokes to be had there about the up the uh, you know the uh, remodeled version. I'm sure. Yes, yes. Of course, that's one of my favorite. Uh, I think we didn't even mention it from uh, Strange New Worlds, the crossover episode. Uh, one of my favorite slides is NCC one seven zero one dash nothing. Was supposed <laughs> to come after the dash. Um, that, was, that was a lovely moment. Anyway, yeah. Uh, Really looking forward to next week's session. Looking forward even more to dissecting the crap out of it with you and uh, looking at our good, bad and batshit for that. 
Um, and viewers, we want to know what you think about this episode. We want to know what you think about all the episodes. So do leave a comment below, share your thoughts with us, uh, whatever they may be. All right, join us next week then, uh, when there'll be more of the same but different. I know what I mean. What, you know life, what I mean. In a, life in a nutshell, Stu. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> in the meantime, peace and long life. Live long and prosper. <laughs>